Well, viewers, now after the election commission's announcement of the assembly assembly polls, yeah, Home Minister Amit Shah's uh, campaign, of course, has kick-started in Telangana. Now, Shah went on to stress that the need here is to have BJP's double-engine Sarkar for the state. However, Amit Shah's speech here lacked any mention of BJP's Telangana leadership, really. Let's listen in firstly to what he had to begin with. तेलंगाना का चुनाव घोषित कर दिया है मुझे बताओ मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में कमल की सरकार लाना चाहते हो क्या आप सभी का जवाब है कि 3 दिसंबर को मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में तेलंगाना में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार बनने जा रही है समय आ गया है कि तेलंगाना को डबल इंजन सरकार चाहिए डबल अभी सिर्फ ऊपर मोदी जी है डबल इंजन का मतलब है नीचे भी मोदी ऊपर भी मोदी Well, uh, most of Amit Shah's speech here was on these lines, slamming KCR and calling for a double-engine government. Now, what becomes evident here is that the BJP is banking heavily on Prime Minister Modi's popularity here, forging a distinct uh, uh, chief minister candidate. Now, you would remember how this strategic approach mirrors the party's prior campaign in the neighboring state of Karnataka, a gamble that didn't really pay off for them. It resulted in a significant defeat and a loss of their only southern stronghold. Now, however, this comparison with Karnataka may not entirely be warranted here, as there are demographic differences and, of course, unique electoral issues as well in Telangana. The one-size-fits-all ideology might not really resonate universally, too. Now, in Telangana, the electoral battleground is clearly influenced by candidate-centric factors. BJP's success in the past stemmed really from influential local candidates or even defectors, rather than a blanket ideological appeal. Now, there's no doubt that BJP faces a significant electoral challenge in Telangana, and the numbers really do the talking here. The 2018 elections saw KCR and his party winning a second straight term in India's youngest state after scoring a landslide victory here in the assembly elections. The TR has then won 88 seats in the 119 member assembly viewers. The Grand Alliance of the Congress, Telugu Desam Party, CPI and uh, Telangana Jana Samiti managed to win just 21 seats. The BJP ended up with just one seat. Now, the BJP's luck, however, got better in the two by-elections in Telangana. In Dubaka and in Huzurabad constituencies, after this, the party's tally rose to three legislators after their success in the two by-elections. The BJP at this point in time is riding high after that and also, mind you, the Greater Hyderabad Municipal Polls was something that the BJP really feels that they can take a lot out of. Now, this, all of this, of course, comes after the BJP made inroads into Telangana by winning five seats in 2014 as well. In 2019 Lok Sabha elections, the BJP improved its tally in Telangana as they bagged four out of 17 MP seats. The party polled nearly 19 0.45% of the total votes. So given the situation, BJP finds itself right now in, and the Congress that is of course riding high on the Karnataka win, is the BJP getting pushed to the third spot in a three-way battle in Telangana is the question that comes up. Now while we look at all the developments that have taken place in the recent past, without a CM face for the BJP, is, is it good for the BJP to have this ploy really ahead of the elections or is it going to work against them? All of these are questions that come up. My colleague Saumit joins us right now to really give us a perspective. Saumit, uh, the election dates of course have been announced. In fact, uh, I believe my, uh, my colleague uh, Saumit will be joining us in a short while. Before that, uh, I also have a panel of guests who are joining us today. Let me introduce them as well. Hamsa Devineni of the BJP with us. We have uh, Dinesh Chaudhary from the BRS. Also joining us, Dr. Girija Shetkar from the Congress with us. We also have uh, Sai Shekhar Angara, senior journalist. Let me open this up uh, with the BJP, of course, because we've spoken quite a bit about the statements that have come in from the Union Home Minister, Mr. Amit Shah. 
Hamza Devineni, very interesting here. You are going in with uh, a complete centre-driven campaign. Prime Minister seems to be your face. Is this something that is going to you know help the party because it has worked in the past. I should say this. It has worked in uh, different states. But in the recent past, people seem to see a difference between the Lok Sabha elections and, you know, the assembly elections. Of course, thanks, Deepak. Of course, uh, the Prime Minister is the face, you know, not just in India, but all across the world. He's a, he's a leader that is reckoning. But uh, uh, apart from that, uh, um, uh, Deepak, I think we need to see that it's just not the leadership, but it's the development behind the leadership. People are recognizing that uh, this kind of unprecedented development that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has shown the nation in the last nine years, you know, uh, is what people are looking at. It's just not his, you know, image as a prime minister, but it's the amount of efforts and the amount of work that he has put in in the last nine years that people are really, uh, you know, now understanding and trying to appreciate. So Telangana, in spite of the amount of, uh, you know, of freebies that the Congress and the BRS, you know, uh, uh, over competition try to announce, uh, irrespective of how many freebies, you know, the only people have realized that the, the only thing that the freebies will do to the state is, you know, put the state in bankruptcy. And as we have seen the BRS government's uh, administration in the last nine years, from 2014 to 2023, in the last eight and a half years, the BRS government has brought Telangana from a dev revenue surplus state to a revenue deficit state. And even, you know, just two months ahead of the election, uh, we have, Telangana government is selling Telangana lands and Telangana liquor uh, licenses and everything that you can name, lots of barrels. So as long as the people bring DRS and Congress to power again, the only thing that they will be left with is a lot of uh, deficit uh, uh, in terms of revenue, for the state and a lot of loans are on, uh, uh, you know, every person and every citizen of, uh, you know, Telangana state for that matter. Uh, I, uh, also, the Congress, if we notice, uh, Deepak, uh, after the elections recently, after the Congress uh, formed government in Karnataka, uh, we had BK Shivkumar come out and tell in the media, it's all available now, that, you know, we don't have money for development and all that we will do is give freebies. So all the all that the Congress and BRS together, or separately or individually, are trying to get is you know fill their pockets with the state exchequer's money, and uh, at, at, oh, with this it's only the people that are suffering. And I think uh, Modi ji's leadership and Modi ji's developmental uh, uh, schemes and uh, works that he has done in the, in the last nine years is unprecedented, and there is no other leadership that can deliver to Telangana as much as Modi ji can deliver. We have not just, uh, you know, predicting it, but we have seen it. Statistics are proof to it. And therefore, uh, it's just not, uh, you know, a, a, a third place, like you said. But uh, BJP is forming government in Telangana. And we are seeing the wave happening as we talk today. Okay, to form that government uh, is a strong state leadership as well, essential. That was really uh, the essence of what I was trying to get at. But we'll come to that. We'll slowly delve into that. Let me bring in uh, the other panelists as well. Let me bring in Dr. Jagirija here from the Congress. Uh, 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 well, the BJP had quite a few things to say about the Congress, the promises as well, because they have been attacking the promises uh, starting from when it began in Karnataka. You, of course, uh, uh, believe that this is a strategy going forward that will help the Congress party. And we've seen a lot of people moving towards the Congress, like we saw in Karnataka ahead of the elections. Is this, uh, a, you know, uh, signs of anything to come? We spoke, deliberated this. But more importantly, uh, for the BJP here, which right now is saying that we are not looking at being the third party in Telangana, but becoming, uh, you know, the, uh, the party that is going to take over the leadership of the state. Do you feel that they can really do that uh, without, uh, you know, having projected or, you know, in the future projecting a state leader? So basically, BJP is completely irrelevant in the South and especially in the Telangana. They keep saying they are going to form a government or they keep saying they're going to play a key role in forming the government. But it, all this is a myth. Given the history of BJP in Telangana, it has scored a century in getting zero deposits in 100 seats in the last two elections. And they don't have candidates here for at least 50% of the seats. And all the booth agents here are resigning. They don't have a manifesto. They don't have a strong party leader. They just come here and say, we want, we want a double engine and all this. Telangana people don't need any double engine. 
what have other states like UP, Madhya Pradesh have done with double engine? The per capita GDP of Telangana is way higher, one of the top in the nation. We want and we contribute much to the GDP in the national level. So the BJP is completely irrelevant here. And the whole Telangana knows that there is a nexus between both the BJP and the TRS. That's why they haven't arrested Kavita and the liquor scam. They constantly talk about corruption on the TRS party and what it is doing. And then why are they not arresting Kavita here? Why are they not doing any investigation in the Kalishwaram scam? This is complete nexus. The nexus is, oh, you help us in state elections to divide the votes. And then we will help you in the national elections to give you some of the empty seats so that you make our government again. And everybody, all people in Telangana know this fact. So they have decided to wipe out the BRS government here. So the BJP government, which is the B team here, will obviously be completely wiped out. And what I don't understand, they come and talk about corruption all the time. And today they spoke about SESTs. Amisha made a lot of things about how Congress is, uh, play, uh, you know, uh, has done nothing for the SDs, but which is wrong. The Modi government has nine years to set up a tribal university, but they have not given any, any commitment except for the last week, which are okay. empty lies. And there has been constant increase in the minorities. There is 33% increase in the crime against minorities. The BJP government just talks here and empty Okay, words. okay, okay. Can I quickly bring in the others as well. Uh, so I'll bring in the BRS here. Mr. Chaudhary, uh, you know, Oh, you, there is, of course, a lot for the ruling party to worry about. On one hand, you have, uh, uh, you know, the Congress uh, week after week, people joining them, you know, them boasting of the five guarantees or six guarantees, really helping them uh, propel themselves to a win. You have the BJP, uh, you have top leaders from Delhi who are coming there campaigning and saying the double engine Sarkar is something that they'll have to look forward to the people of Telangana. And without even a state leader there, they believe that they can really uh, form the government. So how is the BRS dealing with all of this? First of all, let me correct you on one thing. Whoever is joining either Congress or BJP, they are the people who have been denied tickets from the BRS. So, just by admitting our discards into their party, they can't claim to be getting stronger in Telangana or getting a wave in their favor. And one more thing, what Amit Shah today was speaking can be clearly seen as his frustration in his on his party's dwindling prospects because they neither have a leader who they can project as a CM nor do they have a chance of winning over here because we have seen BJP last time has lost more than 100, dip, uh, 100 seats in uh, deposits. And again, even recently, there was one in and off fluke shot in which GHMC, they were getting a few seats. But later on in the Nagarjun Sagar by-election, they have lost deposit. And recently, not even one year before another by-election happened, Munugodu, in which they have lost. And Congress has lost deposits in it. We have won it. So, double engine doesn't work here because double engine is trouble engine and Telangana people know it. If double engine is really effective, deeper, why doesn't any BJP state have per capita income higher than Telangana? Why aren't they? Why, in the, why isn't the GSDP contribution more than Telangana? And why don't they have 24 hours power over there? Why don't they have 100% portable drinking water to their homes? And why don't they emerge as the highest providers of software jobs throughout India? So there are many things. People of Telangana have seen this. Telangana has emerged into pharma hub, IT hub. Life Sciences Hub, Aerospace Hub, and we have been, we have been successful in five revolutions, Deepak. Green Revolution, White Revolution, Blue Revolution, Pink Revolution, and Yellow Revolution. Okay. So, all these okay, people... Let me, let me quickly get a neutral perspective as well, Mr. Chaudhary. Okay, let me get a neutral perspective as well from Mr. Sai Shekhar Angara, a senior journalist who's of course seen Telangana from various lenses. And I say lenses, of course, political and through the leadership of various political uh, leaders as well. Uh, Mr. Angara, how are you reading this? Do you read, read this as a strong three-way fight? Or do you think that any party right now has an edge? 
BRS is enjoying an edge because uh, BRS poll plank is uh, deliverance. They have del they have promised and delivered more than what they have promised. And uh, KCR's uh, trump card would be what he has delivered. And there is everything available uh, uh, in brick and mortar to touch and feel and uh, understand that BRS has delivered. And uh, B BJP and you know uh, Congress, <clears throat> they are trying to indulge in negative politics and pe I don't think people in India are any longer interested in negative negativism, uh, political rhetoric, and uh, there is no political fatigue in Telangana for the simple reason that every time the BRS government is coming up with one new scheme, as latest as recently, the BRS government has introduced the uh, breakfast, the chief minister's breakfast scheme for school children. Th these are, you may consider that these things are freebies, but then they actually uh, ensure uh, the schemes introduced by KCR ha have actually been ensuring the economic growth and the indices give, uh, given by the put out by the government of India are showing Telangana as the top ranker in most uh, <clears throat> parameters. And uh, that is why BRS is enjoying not just an edge, BRS is uh, actually on an upper hand. This is what I feel. And Congress is completely in a disarray because of uh, internal dissensions. There is a scr mad scramble for some seats, about 30, 40 seats. There is a mad scramble. And Congress is bending over backwards to accommodate people who are migrating. What from about BRS the BJP? Like Mr. Because we, you know, uh, we opened this uh, show where we are talking about the Mr. Amit Shah's statement, talking about the double, double engine Sarkar, talking about yeah, Prime I mean, Minister I, being there at the center and being uh, probably the person who will guide. Uh, Telangana as well. Do you think that, that that's a good enough concept really for tele, for uh, BJP to go into elections here in the no, state of Telangana? Because BRS working president KT Ramarao has been challenging both the Congress as well as the BJP to show their chief ministerial candidate. And he's showing his chief ministerial candidate, Mr. K. Chandrasekhar Rao, uh, and uh, they're projecting him as the hat trick chief minister. And the BJP and Congress don't have uh, a chief ministerial candidate, and Modi's image doesn't work in assembly elections. And even in parliament elections, because of some minor mistakes committed by BRS in 2019. Uh, they have uh, they had to lose uh, two more seats uh, to the BJP. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been the case. But uh, uh, when it comes to the speech of Mr. Amit Shah, see, he was talking about farmer suicides. Uh, Maharashtra and Karnataka are the highest in the last three years uh, in the farmer suicides, and Telangana is the lowest. They are, the Telangana suicides in 2021 are 352 only, and there is a steady decline from 2019 to 2021. Uh, whereas, you know, Maharashtra and uh, Karnataka, that is not the case. They were under the BJP-supported uh, parties and BJP rule. Uh, Karnataka till recently okay. it was under BJP rule. And so I, I'll take that question to Hamsa the, uh, Devineni. What? Hamsa, all the panelists here believe that this, uh, you know, lack of leadership is going to dent the hopes of the BJP. It's exactly. not going to really help you all. You are of the opinion that the central leadership is good enough, of, uh, you know, to guide the BJP to the top position. Now, in Karnataka, we saw this dilemma of leadership. We saw yes. a change which came in from Mr. B.S. Yadurappa. During the campaigns, all of a sudden, he became important. And then, yes. you know, things just went into disarray. But here in Telangana, you're not even talking about a leadership. So yes. how much of that is going to make an impact? Because definitely, you see, in any state election, especially in South, of South India, no, people I'm, look I'm for the chief minister. That question, is for, that question is for Hamsa Devineni. Let, let, oh, let, let her take that. I'm sorry. Uh, Hamza, I think you're on mute. If you could unmute and then go ahead. Hi, Deepak, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, I think uh, leadership is not what people look at who is going to deliver, but people. what people really look at is what they're delivering and about what we deliver and what we have already delivered, we've shown people. So irrespective of who the leader is, they know and they believe that this is the only party under the leadership of Narendra Modi ji, who's already done it for nine years. And this is the only party that can do it for Telangana because this kind of unprecedented development in the history of India has never happened, whether be it Congress 
this or whether be it BRS in the last nine years. So whether we have a state leadership uh, declared before elections or we choose our leader after elections is not going to really make much of a difference with people's perception because what all people really need to know and want to know is what the leaders are going to do for them and what the parties are going to do for them. They don't really care, you know, whether it's a leader A or leader B that is doing it as long as, uh, you know, what they need is being done. So uh, I, I don't think, uh, Deepak, uh, that would uh, make too much of an influence uh, in the elections year. And of course, uh, Modi ji is larger than life uh, image for all of us. So, uh, you know, Telangana is going to go for elections uh, without having to declare any uh, CM space uh, in advance. And of course, like uh, other states, we've been doing it. BJP doesn't believe in a single leadership and uh, we believe in development. And uh, this is the party's ideology. So all leaders uh, work under the party's ideology and we work for the people, for the welfare of the people and the benefit of the people. Okay, quickly, I want to comment from Mr. Chaudhary on that and then uh, we'll, we're coming to a close. I'll just take some quick uh, closing comments from all our panelists. Uh, Mr. Ch Dinesh Chaudhary, what do you make of these statements from the BJP that they don't need... Uh, you know, a local leader or a face there because the work that has been coming in from the center itself proves the worth of the BJP for the people of Telangana. Deepak, everybody knows BJP is hurt and it's down to the ground, but they have trying to portray false courage so that their cadre doesn't decimate because we have seen mass exodus of BJP leaders migrating to other parties and also, BJP is the number one culprit for Telangana. And while they try to attack us or try to defame us through central agencies, we know the real culprits who are hand in glove together are Congress and BJP. When they come to Telangana, they try to undermine BRS so that they can form their own secret pact coalition. Because you've seen in Telangana, I've already said before also, there are two municipalities, Manikonda and Maktal, where BJP and Congress share power. And let me ask you, BJP, while it tries to arrest other people or try to attack them, from the past 18 months, Congress top leadership has been, has been out on bail. They have been inquired by ED, but that case doesn't move forward. Whereas other state leaders, they'll be hounded, they'll be harassed, and they'll be put behind bars. Congress leaders Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi, they won't be touched and that inquiry in their cases will want to go forward. So we know that in, since they know they can't challenge B, BR's leadership single-handedly, they are working their hand in glove secret pact which everybody has come to in Telangana. Okay, okay. I, I have very little time are, left, so I'm going to, I'm going to quickly take one question to uh, Dr. Girija as well. Dr. Girija, while Congress, of course, is very hopeful on its part, uh, today... Yes, okay, quickly, quickly, are, quickly. 20 seconds, please. I have very little time. I want to take an opinion from the Congress as well before I wrap. Yeah. No, no. There are protests going on in Gandhi Gone by Congress cadre that save Congress from RSS because of their leadership. Their leadership is in cahoots with RSS. You can see that in the visuals. The BRS and BJP will say anything and everything. And even the senior okay. journalist is biased here. Okay, please respond to that. There is no brick and where is the double bedroom house? Where is the Kaleshwaram project? The pumps have been failed. Where is the KG2 paging? And he talks about the breakfast scheme. There are hundreds of cases of food poisoning right now. The case is in the high court. And now they want to have a new breakfast scheme. Nobody is going to believe this. And they have not paid the midday meal workers and Anganwadi workers, even the basic salary to get provide for all these new schemes is just to pull people. Currently, they don't even have a manifesto because they know any kind of manifesto that BRS people are going to have, the Telangana people are not ready to believe because they have not delivered in the last two manifestos. And I believe that the Congress party is going to come in power as it's being projected by multiple surveys that have been coming this week. And the decision to give the candidates will be because announced very soon. Those are paid First surveys. Class, we are Okay. Okay. A quick question, uh, Mr. Angara. I wanted to. I, I wanted to reflect on this point as well. Now, okay. A quick question to Mr. Angara before we wrap. 
uh, I want to really know here, as far as uh, when, when you uh, read the scenario, the change in party president for the BJP, how much of that has had an impact really for, uh, you know, the separate party in Telangana? BJP and what kind of an impact has it had? Yeah, yeah. B BJP's earlier president, Mr. Bandi Sanjay Kumar, is inarticulate, but he's a rabble rouser, and he could levitate the party from a shambles for, to some extent. There is no doubt about it. But then uh, he has been removed for a variety of reasons. He actually, you know, staged some uh, 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 hair up in uh, SSC question paper leak, and then he was caught red-handed, and he was jailed, and then. Uh, of course, he's out on bail. Whether the case uh, goes any further or not is not known. And also, his rhetoric did not pay off uh, for uh, uh, the BJP in the state. And that is the reason why they wanted to sober down the leadership. And they brought in uh, Union Home Minister, uh, Union Minister for Tourism, Mr. Kishan Reddy, as the uh, state BJP chief. And uh, it's not going to have any great impact in that sense because BJP, uh, it has lost its ground, uh, which it has gained in between. It has lost its ground in contesting the upcoming uh, assembly elections. And as it is, I can say, Congress is on the rise. There is no doubt about it. Girija may be claiming many things, but then Congress is certainly on the rise. And uh, BRS is positioned on, uh, atop all these parties. This is what my uh, view is. Okay, Mr. Angara and uh, all the other panelists as well. I thank all of you all for joining us. It was an interesting debate. Of course, the BJP at this point in time...